Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt Ohora Girl, here to bring you expert level tips and tricks on Ohora Semicure Gel Nail Strips. Today I'm gonna to talk about Ohora Binder Storage, which if you're a collector of Ohora sets can help elevate your storage game to the next level. If you find topics like this helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep videos like this coming. In this video, I plan to go over the pros and cons of using a binder storage system, components and tools that you need to make it happen, go into detail on each component and things to consider, and then at the end, I'll flip through my binders page by page to give you a peek for all the hardcore collectors who want to geek out on my collection. As always, I'll link all of my recommended products below in the description box. Let's get started. So first, let's talk about the pros and cons of moving to an Ohora binder storage system. Pros are, sets take up minimal space. You can finally get rid of all your Ohora boxes, which may have left your closet looking like this. Have all your sets in one place. Easy to travel with your entire Ohora collection. Makes it easier to browse for your next set, compare sets, or plan your next mashup. So now let's talk about the cons. It takes time and money to set up and organize. You have to be careful about light exposure, but I'm gonna talk about that in more detail later. And if you decide to sell or trade your sets later and you already discarded the box, it might make it harder for you to trade or sell depending on which outlet you use. So let's talk about the components that you need to make this project happen. You need a one to four inch three ring zip binder, plastic protector sleeves to hold your strips, cardstock, scotch tape, or Velcro dots. And tools that you're gonna need are scissors or a paper cutter and a printer, which is optional. Let's talk about the binder. Some things to consider are how big is your collection and how much bigger are you anticipating you're gonna go. It's worthwhile to plan this at the beginning of your binder journey so that you don't waste money upgrading later. Three ring zip binders come in one to four inch sizes and they range from 13 to $30 depending on the size and features that you get. I keep Manny sets and petty sets in different binders. Access the petty sets less since I only change my petty once a month. So I don't need to keep them in the Manny binder which I'm pulling out at a minimum of once a week. I use a two inch binder for my Manny sets which currently holds about I think 148 sets and it's full. So I wouldn't recommend going fuller than that. For a two inch binder, you might need something bigger if you have more than that. My petty sets are in a one inch binder and I think I have close to 50. So, and there's plenty of room to grow for that one. Think about this and weigh your need for space against how much space you're willing to let the binder take up or how many binders you want to have. Consider features that would be helpful or handy to have, like a handle or shoulder strap if you see yourself traveling with it or extra pockets and zip compartments to hold other things. So now a word on light exposure. The vanity table has confirmed directly that Ohora strips will not expire as long as they're not exposed to light, which is great news. So in my opinion, it's better to get a darker binder just in case, or at least one that is lined with black on the inside. And some binders like mine have a small hole at the top. The closed zipper doesn't make it all the way to the end. For this reason, I keep my binders stored upright in my dark bathroom cabinet where I don't have to worry about them being exposed to light. But just keep this in mind, depending on the binder you end up getting, plan where you'll be storing it when not in use. Let's talk about the sleeves. These standard size binders, basically two types of plastic sleeve inserts are ideal. One is horizontal, which is what I use, and another is vertical. So mine are four up horizontal storage sheets for currency collectors. I got a pack of hundred of these for like 12 or $13 on Amazon, which I think is a great deal. What I like about them is that they have a separate slot for the label insert, and you can keep the label insert separate from the strips, which I like. The only downside to this design is that the strips can fly out if you like aggressively flip the pages. You hold the binder upside down and they aren't secured closed, which is kind of annoying. But I do have a trick to solve this problem which is that I use a small piece of scotch transparent tape, not magic tape, place it slightly off center to secure the sleeve closed. By placing it off center, you can still slide the strips in and out without removing the tape, but it's just enough to keep them where they should be. I love the transparent tape because it's crystal clear. You pretty much can't even see it on those sleeves. And it comes off cleanly if you need to open that sleeve fully or replace the tape for some reason. And it doesn't leave any residue or puckering on the plastic, so it's great. Another solution some of my friends have come up with is to use adhesive Velcro dots to close the sleeves, which you can place inside the sleeve at the top of the slot. And that will also accomplish the same thing, but it will add bulk to the sleeves, so keep that in mind. And if you do get the Velcro dots, just make sure that when you're applying them, you close the Velcro, take the paper off of both sides of the strip, place it closed inside the slot, and then press it down. And that'll make sure that the Velcro sides are aligned perfectly. You'll kill yourself trying to get them lined up without having them attached. So the other options for the sleeves are vertical storage sheets for matchbook collectors. And there are six up and eight up versions of these. And since they're upright, you don't have to worry about your strips like flying out. They'll pretty much never do that, which is a plus. But here are some other things to consider. Both of these options do not have a dedicated label slot. So you have to decide, I wanna put the label on the same slot as my slips or devote an entire slot to the label. And how much room is that going to take up? If you use a six up sleeve, you can do the box front in one slot, strips in the two slots next to it. Another thing to consider about the eight up version is that the strip sheets are just a smidgen too wide for the slot, so you do have to turn them down, and that takes a little extra time. Now let's talk about cardstock. 
I use plain white cardstock as a backing or separator for my strip slots as well as to print the label inserts for the label slots. Separator was important to me because I wanted to maximize the use of my sleeves by using both sides and making it double sided to display my sets. Some of my friends prefer to maintain the Ohora aesthetic, the silver separator card that comes in the box by using a metallic silver cardstock, which I will link down below. But either way, it doesn't really matter. It just comes down to preference. And I've created a printable template for the four up version that I use, which I've linked down below. And you can download it for free to help with the measurements and sizing for the backing and just print and cut them out. So regarding labels, I wanted all of my labels to be exactly the same in format and sizing, and I didn't want to cut up my boxes because I'm holding onto them just in case I end up trading or selling the sets for some reason down the line. But I also wanted to see both the picture and the name together. So I saved all of the photos of the sets and created a template in Photoshop with the image as well as the name of the set in a grid that I could just easily print out and then cut out for all the ones that I owned. They were perfectly sized to fit. As of now, May 2021, Ohora has released a total of three 168 manis and 132 petties. You can totally do this yourself if you want to take the time. But if you're lazy and don't want to do all that work, I did create a master template of all of these designs on one file. It's like 16 pages of manis and six pages of petties. It's available on immediate digital download on Etsy, which I will link down below. You can print them yourself with a color printer or you can take it on a thumb drive to FedEx Kinko's and they can print it for you. It's like with your own card stock, I think it's like 19 cents a page or something, but don't quote me on that. As far as cutting goes, you can also go to FedEx Kinko's and use their like, professional courtesy paper cutter which is awesome it's out in the open for anybody and it'll cut I want to say like three or four sheets very smoothly and easily and maybe even more that I don't remember probably faster than scissors if you have a lot of sets to cut out and then some more options for labels if you don't want to have them printed is that you can cut out the front of the box and use that in the slot or you can also cut out the top which has the name and use that instead or both if you want to get creative so one last thing I will mention is a potential issue with gem strips they are obviously 3d and if your binder gets too full and the sheets are like crammed in there or you store your binder on its side instead of upright, the weight or pressure of the binder can cause the gem strips to place an impression on any adjacent strips that are across from them. Obviously, we don't want that. <laughs> so I do have actually a couple sets that this happened to a couple months ago. And since then, those strips that were dented have like smoothed out and they like fluffed back up again. So it's not like a permanent thing, but maybe you don't want to wait that long to use that set. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're in either of those two categories, a solution I came up with is to place a small extra piece of cardstock in front of the gems in the sleeve to keep them from protruding out of their sleeve and into the sleeve across from it. And that's been working just fine for me. I hope I've inspired you to give the Ohora binder a try. So if you found this helpful or you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. If you're new to Ohora, make sure to check out my other tutorials for instructions on how to take your Ohora manicure to the next level. And don't forget to click that subscribe button to keep the Ohora tips and tricks coming. I'll go out now with my binder collection for your viewing pleasure. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.